But it's shameful. Yes, it is true. I mean, you heard about the CD, the Chief of Defense Staff, talking about the pressure that they are under uh, to undermine the elections. Clearly, there is desperation in the land at the moment. But infiltration of adult staff, yes, they are going to do that. That is clearly for INEC to monitor because definitely they are going to do that. Nigerians should go ahead and collect their PBC now. Because what we are also hearing uh, refer, is that people are now planning uh, to begin to transfer money ahead. That's the basis of now collecting telephone number information about uh, voters to be. So, guys, you can see that there is a lot of desperation, as in people are so desperate, you know, to win this election at all costs. We all know that these politicians, they don't have the masses at heart. They just want to have their way through. They are not even thinking of the sufferings of Nigerians, honestly. You can see that these old politicians, they are determined, you know, to win this election at all costs. Some of them are already maneuvering INEC, you know, to buy votes ahead of time. We have seen cases of people having PVCs in their possessions. And sometimes when people go to pick up their PVCs, they end up not finding their names. They, they will be told that their PVCs cannot be traced, you know. So guys, I just want to highlight to people that really there is danger in the land. There is real danger. These old politicians, they are still trying to pave their way through in this 2023 election. So I call on all the obedience. Please go get your PVC. Get your PVC and be ready to vote. Please, please be ready to vote for Mr. Peter Obi. And I tell you, no matter what they do, no matter how they try to rig this election, they will end up not succeeding. Because this election is all about the people. And the people have decided to go for Mr. Peter Obi, nothing can stop it. So please go get your PVC before the window closes. So guys, let me allow you watch this video so that you understand what the politicians are doing behind the scene. That's why you see them paying people to come for rallies, you know, just rallies. They pay, not to talk of. So guys, you can see how desperate these politicians are. Let me allow you watch this video and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you. About 70 days. Nigeria will be heading to the general elections in 2023, but there are still some cases and issues that need to be rectified before the February showdown. One, the attacks on INEC offices around the country, which have continued unabated with the destruction of cubicles, ballot boxes, and other valuable assets of election management body to be used for the conduct of the elections. Also, some politicians are expressing doubts over the lack of confidence of the fidelity of INEC processes and procedures used for the conduct of the election, particularly the use of Beaver's East transmission of results and all of that. Similarly, the chairman of INEC have been under tremendous pressure to scale down certain procedures that will make the election rigging difficult or be removed from office. There's also a report by politicians to infiltrate ad hoc staff recruitment. There are reports of politicians harvesting information of PVCs. What are the full impact of these issues? Joining us now this morning to discuss uh, the preparations for INEC and the elections and needs to be rectified heading towards the election is Mike Higini, former INEC resident electoral commissioner. Great to have you this morning. He also discussed court of appeal judgment in Calabar, which affirmed Senator Prince Basi Otu as the authentic APC governorship candidate for the upcoming 2023 elections. Welcome to the show once again. Let's talk about really? all of the push as regards this election. We're hearing that ad hoc staff, members of staff, are the next target. And once they infiltrate ad hoc staff, then we can get leeway into INEC. We're also hearing of some people with political leanings getting PVC. In fact, there was a call put to somebody today that their PVC was ready, as reported by somebody else. And at the end of the call, they said, hope you vote for our party, and they mentioned the name of the party. We're beginning to have modes of infiltration like that. Recently, the court case against Ikenga was quashed, you know, while the Imo state government was trying to take him on as regards some revelations. Where do we draw the line in all of this? Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Abati, Rofai, and uh, my sister there for having me uh, as part of our continuing efforts um, to provide relevant information for the people of Nigeria so that 2023, really, they must have a date with history. Uh, first, I must say that um, 
Um, around the world, particularly in our country, we are going through a very difficult times. Uh, so many things are happening, many of which you have outlined on the, on the path to the 2023 election. So, but my first statement to the Nigerian people is that um, irrespective of what is going on, that uh, we, must not uh, we must not dissolve into despair, but rather we must resolve to act because determination, drive, and resilience are the hallmark or characteristics of the people who are determined to make a change in their own lives. And 2023 uh, provide opportunity for all of us so that the struggle of today will be a promising tomorrow. Now, on the issues that you have raised, um, they are not entirely new. Uh, if you have followed what has been going on over the years, uh, 2003, 2007, 2011, 2015, 2019, uh, these have been uh, things that have been associated with our election, which is very shameful. Yes, if it's true, I mean, you heard about the CD, Chief of Defense Staff, talking about the pressure that they are under uh, to undermine the elections. Clearly, there is desperation in the land at the moment on account of the fact that virtually all the loopholes that have been used to rig election over time have almost now been blocked, except something new that before I left the system that we don't know about. Infiltration of ad hoc staff, yes, they are going to do that. That is clearly for INEC to monitor because definitely they are going to do that. But will they succeed? Even if you infiltrate ad hoc staff process, what you can only do is to sabotage the, an area or the process. But in any case, you cannot benefit from it, all right? Yes, of course, issue about PBC collection. Nigerians should go ahead and collect their PBC now because you cannot get to the polling unit arena without you having your PBC. But very important on the issue about PBC collection, because I understand from the news uh, information put out there by my the commission, is to the effect that those who were on transfer, those who lost their PVC and all of that, they are ready for collection and have been taken to the various states. And of course, we can see on television, even on Arise, uh, the effort for people to collect their PVC. But very important is that this information is important for those who have done transfer. If, for example, you are being a suit lady, for instance, and you are transferring your place of voting to Etiosa, you don't go to suit lady anymore. You go to a social and INEC office. That is where your PVC would be. Of course, there are issues about people harvesting uh, information of uh, voters with a view uh, to now doing, because obviously with the cashless policy of the CBN or the limit of withdrawal right now, what we are also hearing uh, require is that people are now planning uh, to begin to transfer money ahead. That's the basis of now collecting telephone number, information about uh, voters to be. Again, this is where the CBN and the banking system need to come in. Because I can tell you, I mean, from the information we are hearing now, I mean, are you not surprised that even the new notes that we're talking about now, uh, last week I tried to get something from the bank. They gave me only 20,000, I mean, 10,000 naira. But you go to parties now, you see that the, the new money is already being uh, displayed in parties and all that. So the first point of sabotage of a policy sometimes will come from the, the policy authority itself. How come that CBN, that we continue to have our note in places where it ought not to be? But as related to election, Rufai, I am fully for what we call a cashless um, electoral policy on election day itself so that we can deal with the issue of vote <laughs> buying. Assume the level of a menace in our country. That needs to be dealt with. Furthermore, the continued unabated attack on INEC offices, of course, I've said over and again, that whether it is not new, it's a shame to our country that people who undermine the integrity of public institutions, particularly the electoral management body, that is saddled with the responsibility of conducting the election, its assets across several states of the country have now come under severe attack 
to the extent that within the period as uh, put out by the commission, you have a total of uh, 50 attacks in different locations across the country. In fact, if you look at the whole breakdown, Imo State appears to be like the proverbial tortoise that is always in all stories you could see, even though it's across the country. And I think that our, our folks, our people in, in Imo State, must be worried about the fact that since 2019, up to date, you have that kind of a record. 2019, four state, eight, uh, eight, um, four incidents, four, uh, eight state. 2020, you have nine state, you have 22 incidents. 22 incidents in 2020, of course, we, during the period of the NSAS. Of course, 2021, seven uh, 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 state, 12 incidents. Then 2022, which is the month we are now, moving towards this election. You are having five um, states with uh, eight incidents. All of these that are happening are terrible. And that is why, Rufai, if you put all of this together, against the statement of Mr. President that he has made over and again, particularly the recent one in the US, in the African summit, is very instructive. On this program, I have said before, and I want to repeat again, I think let the president hear this. And those who are also around the president need to hear this. Whereas the conduct of election, either will be on the driver's seat. The truth of the matter is that the success of election is a collective responsibility of all citizens. But more important, and which is why some of us, we are very encouraged by profound statement coming from the president, that, and that is that where we are now, Rufai, given that power is back to the people on the basis of the design, procedure, and process, the law, what is required now is the security environment. Security has become the key that will make or mark a successful election in the 2023. I say this by way of trying to bring Mr. President's attention to a few things that has happened under his leadership. Let us, I repeat again, INEC is the body responsible for the conduct of election. However, the ambience that is required to conduct election that is now defined by the challenge of insecurity is the responsibility of all security agencies under the commander-in-chief. And that was why at the um, Oweri three days IGP conference, and I was a, a, a resource person, when the president made that profound statement, which I repeated over time, that in this 23 election, that he charged Nigerian police, security generally, to be apolitical, to be firm, loyal to democratic values. And the more important is that he's calling on them, he's charging them, directing them to secure a space for citizens to freely exercise their franchise so that the outcome of that election will reflect the choice of the people and that he offers his full support and natural in that regard. What I want the president to do is to recognize by reminding him of a few things here. Perhaps we may start from that on the other time. And that is that in any electoral, in a, in a democracy, any president who is on his final term, what will be remembered for most that will occupy a chapter in history is not necessarily about what he has achieved in other sector of the public life, but whether when election is conducted and he was about to leave, were we able to have a credible free fair election that will bring about the greatest promise of democracy, which is peaceful transfer of power. That is what people are going to do. That is going to be his greatest legacy. Because under him, just like Jonathan, we now have the most comprehensive electoral acts that have been part of the Air Force in 2010. We now have that. Under his watch, we are now have, and his IMEC work under his uh, current regime, we are now having a beavers. We now have a beavers 
that has now dealt with the issue of one person, one vote. All right, it's not happening. Under his leadership, all right, we now have a situation where the INEC can now transmit results from the polling unit, something we started in 2010, particularly in 2012, when the first transmission exercise was piloted in Cross River State at the level of the world. But today, we are now being able to do that. It's happening under his word. These are the needed to leverage on. Furthermore, and perhaps far more important, is the fact that under his watch, for a period of 25 years, before the current democratic experience, yeah. we were unable to create access for more Nigerians to now have more pulling units to serve this area that don't be served, service before from 120,000 to 176,846 pulling units. All of this has happened under his word. Therefore, his legacy will be that as the commander in chief, as he has stood the whole world all over the place, and I want everybody to leverage on that, as done by the CDS, is to ensure that the security, which is the only issue left now, is clearly under him. And what should he do? By my way of suggestion as a citizen, based on my experience, having worked under his own leadership, I left and under President Jonathan, is as follows. One, where we are now, we are the level we call implementation strategy. I encourage you, Mr. President, and those around Mr. President, to now ensure that all security, the head of security, must now be invited for a briefing to Mr. President, to tell Mr. President to have a briefing on what we call the, the, the strategic plan to deal with the following issues. What would we do with the issue about vote buying? What would they do about Togri? What would they do about the mapping of all the places of violence that we already know? We know traditional places of violence, they have been marked. They need to tell Mr. President their strategic implementation plan, the strategic implementation plan to deal with all these specific issues that are obviously defining the atmosphere to the 2023 election. Right. This is very important. Very key. Thank you, Mr. Aguini. And now, still speaking on security, uh, since that's really a front, a front burner topic at the moment, beyond physical security, which a number of groups have um, said hasn't been quite efficient, and calling the president, as you have done um, now, to, to respond to this, following his statement that he has provided financially to INEC, even though INEC has said that despite the provisions, these recent attacks have meant that they are, the resources provided are stretched. Therefore, that is still even coming under scrutiny that perhaps the money that was initially released, as the president has said, might not be enough because they didn't put into plan these um, attacks on buildings and the rebuilding of buildings. But away from that, how about cybersecurity? You talk about BIVAS, um, the bimodal uh, voter accredi accreditation system. You talk about the e-transmission of results. What some voters have said is that they are concerned about their data and the harvesting of their data so that now some members of some parties who might want to buy their votes are no longer even coming to them directly. They are buy, they're getting their information, you know, their data online or from unscrupulous agents within INEC itself. Going back to the example that Rufai talked about, this is a real situation of someone who was called to say that her INEC, her PVC was ready. She should pick up and as, a, as an ender said, oh, hope you're voting for my party X, Y, Z. The situation is that, number one, she was concerned about the fact that how did her data get into the person's hands? How did people get her information to be able to make a demand such a, because they're very accurate. How is INEC planning or going to deal with these concerns by the electorate and also by the candidates themselves who have expressed concern on procedures and processes of INEC at this time? Well, thank you very much. Um, let me say this. First, um, just to let the public know, I am no, no longer in INEC. So there are certain issues that the commission, and I'm sure they are be doing that to respond to. But from the point of view of somebody who has spent 10 years, who has also been part of these uh, innovations that we are talking about, which is the reason why 
I decided that my votary is absolute neutrality, but to educate Nigerians. Here is what I need to say with respect to issues you've mentioned. Um, the best way, when you talk about cyber security, about beavers and all the concerns and all of that, at this point in time, my sister, let me say this, that whether it is good to acknowledge the fears and concerns of people, let us do more on areas that we have succeeded, that have shown that clearly those issues are things of the past. The problem we have, and I'm going to be very frank here, is that out there, we have some ICT experts, and we also have a few unscrupulous ones within the election management system, who are selling teleportation stories that they want to hear. I have heard about preloading of beavers. That is a pure lie. There is nothing like preloading of beavers at all. That was what they refer to under the Carida regime, which is also not true. But they took advantage of the fact that every PVC of INEC, once you swipe it with the then car reader, it will definitely accept it, show that it's INEC car reader. But it's not a complete process. That was why they were now abusing incident form. As we speak, incident form is gone forever. Number two, the issue about preloading, it cannot happen because every person who is registered, you have to be physically present in the unlikely events that either of one of your 10 fingers could not be confirmed. What about your face? So INEC is doing, that's why it is called biomodal acquisition process any of your finger or your face that has shown 100 percent success that is the reason why people are so desperate that's the reason why people now matter to them before now we used to hear in those days that why are you bothering yourself whether you vote for me don't vote for me you know they are going to win can they say that anymore why are they now trying to buy people it's not going to work on the harvesting of names with a view to be paying money ahead to potential voters. That's the responsibility of security now. The banking system need to come in here because the key associates, managers of all contestants, whether House of Assembly, the governorship, federal house, senatorial, presidential, they can be profiled. If, for, for instance, Mr. Ojo, is or Mr. Organic Kevin is a, uh, a manager of a contestant in an election, all right? And in charge of finance, all that is required to be done is for the CBN, the, the bank is uh, the, the, the commercial banks, particularly the EFCC and ICPC, they must profile all sorts of individuals within the political system of any of the camps. So when you now see an individual transferring uh, 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 money to 200 people, 300 people in a day, then of course, those people must be flagged up immediately. That's why I must tell you this year, that there are so many hurdles for election rigor to cross in this election. And that's why they are going to have the dinosaur experience. There is no way. All that require the Nigerian people, go and collect your PVC now. Look, you must sing a new song by 2023. Nothing they can do. The whole desperation that you are seeing today is on account of the fact that virtually all the loopholes for rigging election, both statutory and procedure, have all been blocked. This is where we are. And the greatest assurance to the Nigerian people is that if a process had been used to a piloted to conduct over 105 by elections and off season elections. What further assurance do you need from the election management body that you have today? Look, INEC have developed processes, procedures that are sustainable, replicable, that will indeed give meaning and purpose to the ballot 
are the best means of the expression of the will of the people. What is required now is collective unity of Nigerian people. Don't forget that, you see, the battlefield of grasshopper is usually a feast for the hawks. No amount of the grandstanding that they do that can change the situation at all. Look, the redness of the eye for those who smoke a cigarette, they know that it cannot light a cigarette. No matter how red, how desperate they are, they cannot change the situation at all. It's already out of their hand at the moment. My call is again to Mr. President that the only thing left, because security is not in the hand of INEC. INEC is not in charge of security. Okay. It is clearly that of security okay, agencies. That is my call for Mr. President. That you will remember for being able to create the environment necessary to achieve okay, this. Mike. Okay, very quickly, two things to be extracted from some of the statements you have made. The first one, you are calling on the president <coughs> to ensure uh, security and to summon the uh, security agencies for strategic uh, uh, planning. Strategic planning, two months to the uh, election. What strategic planning are they still planning? Two months. What the assignment is simply one of common sense. Are you not surprised? that with about 20 security agencies, with all the meetings that have been held, 50 attacks on uh, INEC facilities in 15 states, not one arrest has been made. Nobody has been prosecuted. So why are you so optimistic that any strategic planning can still drop from uh, the skies? Now, you were talking also about uh, you know, INEC being ready and all of that, having processes in place. But the Civil Liberties Organization has been quoted as reporting that in parts of the East, particularly in Anambra, that INEX staff are the ones themselves frustrating the collection of PVCs. So this INEC that we are all uh, saying has processes, procedures, whatever, does INEC itself has a mechanism in place for monitoring the performance of its staff on the field? Dr. Ruben, thank you very much. First, on the first question, at this stage of all stakeholders, it's not about planning anymore. What I was saying was that the president needs to be brief. He needs to call on all security heads to present to him what they already have on ground to be able to be sure that the assurances they're getting from them the assurance that are realistic and workable. Because the flashpoints, Dr. Abati, across the country have always been known. So they need to tell the Prince of President on violence, what are the plans that you put in place? Because there are issues that I won't mention here. A week to election, 48 hours to election, 24 hours to elections, there are steps that security agency must take with respect to identify flashpoints, identify key talks, extra constitutional actors that you have across the country. Dr. Abadi, do you know that all these politicians who are making noise, pretending that they are this, they are that, they are so powerful. If security is withdrawn from them today, they will not be able to step outside. And that is why it's security abuse. And that is why neutrality is very key. That is the domain of Mr. President. INEC is not involved in security. But on security, I've also said that the attacks on INEC offices, which is not new, but what is shameful is that this has gone for several years. And that is that security, I mean, communities, must take responsibility also because I know for sure that no uh, group of people will move from one local government to another local government to which is not his, his own and burn down INEC office. It is within the community. Again, that speaks to the failure of what you call uh, intelligence. In those days, we used to hear about the SIB. The SIB officials are usually people wearing plain clothes, dressed like any one of us. You found them in batteries, in restaurants, in motor parks, 
in social gathering, they get information. No group of people will go and plan to attack INEC without any form of planning by this group of people. That's the respect to security. With respect to internal behavior, misconduct within every organization. Yes, you have those ones in INEC. As a matter of fact, some of those who have been selling hawking information to politicians are from within the commission inside. The ICT section, the commission need to rent hardly on some of your scrupulous ones who are always involved in deceiving politicians. Let me tell you, Dr. Abati, most of the things they tell politicians are not going to work, but they know that majority of politicians are illiterate when it comes to ICT. And so they can bamboozle them. They pay so much money to them. That is what is going on. And of course, you also have their allies in the larger society who are ICT, that's why they call themselves. They are the ones deceiving them that they are going to have the net, do this. Look, all those shenanigans are all over. Look, we had five governorship elections that have just been conducted. All these things we are talking about, Dr. Abati, they all, they all happen, but they fade woefully. They fail woefully. They are still going to fail in 2023 because the level of awareness now, Nigeria want to take their future into their hands. 2023 is going to be a different thing altogether. That success is a collective responsibility. And that's why I'm saying that whereas we acknowledge the threats, we may have to do more on solution. And that is why I'm saying that of all the challenges ahead of the election, politicians are responsible for 98% of the crisis we have. But I can tell you that there are so few, so few, so much, so that what they require is a collective determination, drive, and resilience by the people whose power has been given to now to ensure that you collect your people because on election day, every police unit will be populated. Everybody will be there. It's no longer possible for anybody to think that, look, Dr. Abate, do you know one of the problems they have right now? The problem is that today, at the end of every polling unit election, a new register is produced. A new register, irrespective of what is there. And that is why I want people who are talking about bankable votes, no more bankable votes again under the current regime. And that's why dinosaur experience I'll be talking about is very real. It's going to happen. People are going to lose money. Look, if you transfer money to people ahead, because you can see what is going on now. Because of the CBN policy right now, they are now planning to transfer the money ahead. And they are also somehow, you know, we don't really have, you know, sufficient uh, uh, data protection law in the country at the moment. And that is why within INEC, all those who engage in that funny registration, they will be dealt with. I say this because from experience, one of the persons that we proceeded against in INEC in Akwa Ibonte was an ICT star who was doing things with politicians. He's been dismissed. Of course, the trial of a professor, if I can resume today, in Akwa Ibonte. You could see that is issues of 2019 are also still being dealt with. As we speak today, the facts of who is a candidate for House of Assembly House of Rep, Senatorial, Governorship, in several states yet to be settled. This is a, a major area of regression. But my call for Mr. President is to know that all the things that have happened under your world, this innovation, new okay. electronic okay. transmission, it is for you okay. to be your best legacy okay. by ensuring okay, that Gini. the enabling environment is created. Mr. Gini. Thank you so much. Uh, because of time, we can't talk about, you know, the APC case in um, uh, as, as regards the governorship candidate that emerged or two, but we'll talk about that some other time. Thank you so much for your time.